members who are here with us today. It's an honor that you're worshiping with us, and I pray that you can come and be with us again very soon. We now begin our worship for the day with the singing of our first hymn, which will be immediately followed by a divine service, which today is divine service study four. in thought, word, and deed, 
and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We pause for a moment of silent confession before our God. And we cry out before the throne of God. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you. And for his sake he does forgive you of all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together today the words of the intro as you find printed on the insert in your bulletin.
Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we receive God's holy word. The Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday after Trinity is from Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land, and that the Lord your God, that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 6. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin, now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death, has no, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise to honor of God in the hearing of this gospel. Whoever murders will be liable to judgment. 
But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together our Christian faith this morning in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 206. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will act for men. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our sermon here.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message this morning comes from our gospel lesson. Jesus says, For well, I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter into the kingdom of heaven. These are our Lord's own words upon which we will meditate this morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Do you want to go to heaven when you die? Many a Christian might ask that question of someone to whom they are witnessing. Kind of an opening to get their attention, kind of like I use it as an opening to get your attention in today's message. Now, I believe if you ask just about anybody that question, do you want to go to heaven when you die, unless they are an outright unbeliever or atheist, their answer would honestly be yes. A problem can arise, though, with that Christian using that as an opening to witness, depending on what they say next. Is the response that they come up with next then a laundry list of things that you have to do that are somehow going to make you good enough to go to heaven? Well, if that is so, then that is absolutely the wrong response. Now, the Pharisees of Jesus' day, they thought that was the way. They worked very hard at being pious and righteous, following God's laws to the nth degree, at least on the outside. They believed wholeheartedly that this was the way to God. That this was how they were going to get on God's good side. That this was how God was going to then have to give them heaven as a reward. And these scribes and Pharisees also set themselves up as the standard for the common folk. The standard to which all people should strive. But I ask you, is that the right response to that question about whether you want to go to heaven when you die to show them a list of things that they have to do to work for it? Well, if you want an answer to that question, you ask the only person who knows how it is to get to heaven because he is the way, Jesus Christ our Savior. And what does he say to you today? I tell you. It wasn't just those people back then. I tell you. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, does that sound like the Pharisees and those misguided Christian witnesses have the right response, that laundry list of things? Jesus is saying you have to be better than the absolute human best or you will never get into heaven. Never. Get it? Never! Why would Jesus do that? People need hope. The more screwed up this world gets every stinking day, people need to believe they've at least got a shot for heaven. And then you go on and you read a little bit more and Jesus starts talking about murder and people probably think, oh, good. At least I got that one covered. I never murdered anybody. There's a check mark in my column. God must love me so much. And then Jesus says, if you merely call somebody you fool, you'll be liable to the hellfire. There goes my check mark. When I thought I at least had. 
Where's the hope, Jesus? Why bother? Even try. Where's the hope? I have some shocking news for you today. There is no hope. There is no hope for you. Well, there's no hope for you on your own. We heard in the Old Testament today God's holy command of sin. And if we honestly looked at our lives against that list of commandments, we would come to the conclusion we have all failed miserably in every single one of them, one by one, we haven't come anywhere close to fulfilling them. So you see, you're hopeless. I'm hopeless. The whole stinking world is hopeless. Well, hopeless again on our own. And you know we're hopeless because God does not grade on a curve. Getting to heaven is not like outrunning a bear. <laughs> you just got to be faster than the other guy. Getting to heaven isn't just being better than the other guy. No, God is perfect. God is holy. And he demands you be perfect and holy in regards to his commandments and in regards to absolutely everything else he says in his holy word. Now I have some good news for you. There is hope. In fact, it's your only hope. Your only hope is not in your own goodness, but in the goodness of Christ. The law of God does not change. Jesus did not come to this earth and say, well, the law didn't work, let's try something different. Jesus did not come with some kind of new and better plan. You heard him say it, at least in Bible class today. Jesus says, do not think that I came to abolish the law and the prophets. That's the whole Old Testament word of God. He says, I have not come to abolish it, but to fulfill it. To fulfill them, to fulfill all those words. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth shall pass away, not one iota, not one dot will pass from the law until all is come. See why we're hopeless on our own? And our only hope is in Jesus. Because Jesus fulfilled God's law perfectly. And he did it for you. And he did it for me. And he did it for the whole world. And he did it by living his perfect life. We can't be perfect. We can't be holy on our own. So Jesus is perfect and holy for us in our place. And then Jesus gives us, freely gives us that perfection and that holiness without any cost to any one of us because it already cost him everything. Each one of us has a debt of sin that is plus. Compound that debt of sin by the billions of people that live on this earth right now and the billions of people who have ever lived here. And there is absolutely no way we can even wrap our minds around the size of this sin. That it's like a rotting stench upon God's creation. And for us to try and pay this debt possible. No matter how perfect you try to be, it would not help in the least 
Because Jesus says, you therefore must be perfect. As your heavenly Father is perfect. And later on, St. James seems to pile on when he writes, whoever keeps the whole law but fails in just one point becomes accountable of it all. So I ask again, do you want to go to heaven when you die? Then you need perfect righteousness. Well, in Christ, your righteousness does indeed exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. For as we heard today in that beautiful epistle lesson, you have been baptized into Christ's death and your sinful nature has been crucified. We heard St. Paul write in Romans today, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. In your baptism, the filthy rags of your old failed righteousness is covered completely and beautifully in the robe of Christ's righteousness. Christ's perfect righteousness is yours. In your baptism, you die. You died with Christ. And those who are dead are free from sin. Your righteousness does exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees. For you have been given the righteousness of the holy, sinless Son of God. And because of this, and because of this alone, we can now walk in newness of life. And this newness of life is not a laundry list of things that we strive to do on our own. This newness of life is a happy path of life and service. Live to God. Live to our fellow man. And we do it not because we have to to earn our salvation, but we do it as a joyful response for the salvation we have been given in Christ Jesus our Savior. Dearly won by Jesus Christ on the cross in our place, freely given to you by your loving Father through your Holy Spirit in baptism. And Paul writes elsewhere in Galatians, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. Faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Because Christ is in you, there is now hope. A sure hope. A certain hope. You have been raised to a new life. A new spiritual life just as certainly as Christ was raised physically on Easter morning. You are now raised with Christ to walk. To walk in a newness of life and to share in his resurrection on the last day. In Christ, it is no longer do you want to go to heaven when you die. It is now you will go to heaven. It is sure. It is certain because it is in Christ. And until then, consider yourselves dead to sin 
but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And God's people joyfully say to that, Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated at this time. We will take registration of those who are here in the worship service. And those of you at the end of the pew would be kind enough to report all the people in your pew so we don't have to pass it down. If you feel free to pass it down, you can do that as well. In the meantime, we will hear some beautiful music as we prepare the Lord's song. Please rise and continue with the service of the sacrament found beginning on page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Father, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son Jesus Christ our Lord, who made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruit of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace the Lord be with you always.
Let us rise and sing together the book of the minutes found on page 211. Thank you. 